you can remember that night as clear as this one. Six months ago, somewhere between midnight and morning, your computer signaled an incoming email on the United Internet System. When you saw the name of the sender, Calypso, your eyes glazed over with visions of your greatest fantasy, your ultimate desire. And then, when you read the message, you knew that this dream was within your grasp. The message, flashing in red, simply said, Will you drive? Once a year, the legendary Calypso, a man who dwells beneath the streets of LA, holds the Twisted Metal competition. The contest takes place all around the Los Angeles area and calls upon vehicles of every kind to battle to the death. The one driver still alive at the end of the night is granted any request, any prize he asks for. There are no limits on price, size, or, according to some, even reality. Your special invitation from Calypso has given you the chance to do battle in Twisted Metal. This is where all of your skills, all of your luck, and all of your guts are put to the test. This is where life and death decisions occur every instant. This is where the Grim Reaper lurks around every corner, waiting to strike. And this is where your ultimate dream can come true. Welcome to the big time. Welcome to Twisted Metal. And thank you for joining me! This is a long overdue revisit of the very first Twisted Metal game. For a number of reasons. The absolute least of which is... This is a Christmas game! Taking place on Christmas Eve of 2005. Six months ago, apparently. So yeah, the entire last two months of every year is, of course, Christmas time. What better time to play Twisted Metal games? And murder people in the streets of Los Angeles. It will at least help us think warm thoughts. We'll be playing as Thumper, one of the secret main characters of the series who has appeared in most of the games. Here he is, in his original incarnation. Most notably, are his stats. His stats are out of control. The special weapon is uh, very, very good. In fact, let's real quick go back to the software manual. Scroll all the way ahead to his entry. Way down here. He's literally the last vehicle in the entire manual. Mm, there he is. His license plate is a uh, drive-by. But his weapon, the Scorcher, is the only one ranked ultra-powerful. However... Mr. Grimm has an ultra, ultra powerful special. <laughs> that is to say, those are two ridiculously powerful specials, and Thumper's is easier to use than Mr. Grimm's. So, let's start using it. There's probably a lot of game ahead of us, even though this is a very small scale Twisted Metal game. But even though he has the only ultra powerful special in the game, he also has high speed, and surprisingly high armor? He's not nearly as hardy as Sweet Tooth, who also has four uh, dots of armor. That is an overrating. I don't know why he has four dots. He should have three, maybe two. Handling is very low, which in any other Twisted Metal game is pointless. That's just a dump stat that you don't have to worry about. In this game, low handling means ice physics. So, we are actually going to have a hard time driving around, but we've still got a very powerful car. And our first level is a one-on-one -on -one duel. It's going to be the only randomly selected opponent in the game, and it's Outlaw. Let's see how powerful our special is. Because Outlaw doesn't have many places to run. Neither do we. But uh, Outlaw is very aggressive. Because he wants to get in range and use that... Very short range special of his. In doing so, he will get melted by our flamethrower. Didn't stand a chance. But that level is supposed to be easy. Every character can get through that one pretty quickly. This is where the real fun begins. 
and it'll still probably be pretty quick here. We start every level with four uses of our special. That's enough to kill, like, almost every vehicle in the game. Unfortunately, Darkseid first appears here. Darkseid is a monstrosity who can easily take four specials. But uh, this game is brutally difficult. I've had to practice quite a bit just to get back in the hang of things. And I'm still going to have a hard time. That said, I can beat the game, so hopefully uh, I will do so on video today. Small feat that it is. Here comes Darkseid. So, while I'm killing time dealing with this over full sack of health that is Darkseid, um, one of the reasons I'm doing this playthrough is... Uh, my co-commentator for my actual Let's Plays of Car Combat games, that would be Static, my good friend, uh, his computer broke down. So he will not be co-commentating for a while, so those uh, Let's Play videos will not be coming out until his computer finds some sort of repair or replacement. So, might be a while before we get back to Rogue Trip, which, uh... I'm going to complete Rogue Trip before I start any other new car combat LPs. So, in the meantime, it's just going to be these live playthroughs of games I've played through before. Not the worst fate. We'll have some fun with it. Also, I've barely ever played through Thumper in these games. Only time I've ever played through Thumper was in one level of head-on. Which is not a good representation of Thumper. Because uh, the special on this vehicle got nerfed to hell in head-on. For good reason. In Twisted Metal 1 and 2, it can be a one-hit kill on certain vehicles. It is, as the manual says, ultra-powerful. When I did the Let's Play of Twisted Metal 1, uh, I didn't want to. I had no interest in playing through this game. The first time I booted it up, I had a miserable time. Never wanted to play it again. So the last thing I wanted to do was have to practice it to actually be able to beat it. And record it. And then talk about this thing. But I did want to do a Let's Play of Twisted Metal Head On which is a direct sequel to this game. Well, an indirect sequel. A sequel to this game sequel. So, for context's sake, I did begrudgingly do a full Let's Play of Twisted Metal 1, which, nonetheless, was not very good, because I expected no one to watch it. I mean, look at this game. It's hideous. Who would want to watch it? Surprisingly, quite a few people so, my research was very bad when I did that Let's Play. Uh, my gameplay was not the best. And my commentary was one take, wherein I uh, barely tried. So, I owe it this much. One more playthrough. And knowing me, I will probably play through it again someday. Even though this is maybe the least of the Twisted Metal games in terms of quality. It has every reason to be. It's the first one. There were no car combat games before this one. So, it has plenty of excuses for being bad. But it is bad. Definitely has its charm, though. As I've played a lot more of it, to, uh, in order to be able to consistently complete the damn thing. I have realized that every vehicle has their own unique AI quirks. So, Mr. Grimm, I mentioned in the main LP that he will constantly run away from you until he is the final enemy remaining. 
then he'll actually turn and fight. What I didn't realize is while he's running away from you, he will constantly drop uh, these things, road spikes. Which means while you're chasing him, if you chase him in a straight line directly behind his vehicle, he'll pop your tires and get away even faster than he was getting away before. Very irritating AI routine. Warthog, I have not figured out his quirk if he has any. He just seems to be hyper aggressive. There's Mr. Grimm. We have a lot of homing missiles, which are a contender for the best weapon in this game. Best non special weapon, that is. Look at the damage they do. I mean, it's Mr. Grimm. Mr. Grimm has no health. But they home in really, really well. And they do a lot of damage. And Mr. Grimm wants to die for some reason. There are so few enemies around that he switched to his aggressive AI pattern. And unfortunately for him, his aggressive AI pattern is suicide, because he's not likely to land his uh, special attack. Ultra, ultra powerful as it may be, it has no homing. Also in this game, it's not a skull, it's like a guy's face in red. I assume it's one of the developer's faces. Although it moves so fast, there's no way to ever find out who it could possibly be. Because I know what like half the developers of this game look like at this point. And specifically what they looked like in the year 1995 when this game was made. Crimson Fury wants to die. I've said that uh, Mr. Grimm has the highest speed and lowest armor in this game. And that's usually true for Twisted Metal games. Mr. Grimm almost always is the glass cannon with the high speed, lowest armor. I am literally stuck on this platform. There we go. Um, that is usually the case for Mr. Grimm because uh, Crimson Fury is not in most of the games, but when Crimson Fury is, it has the highest speed and lowest armor. Such is the case in its debut game, Twisted Metal 1. Which is uh, very pronounced when you actually try to fight Crimson Fury and it dies in seconds. That's how I kicked off the LP in the first place. And I'm glad I was able to get that on camera because it was pretty hilarious. Pit Viper and Outlaw are stacked up here. You do want the enemies to stack up because they will uh, injure each other very frequently. Mostly by crashing into each other. And collisions do absurd damage in this game. I actually hit my ammo cap, which I rarely do. Ooh, rear fire. Oh, I almost used my rear fire missiles to uh, take out Pit Viper there. The whole energy attack system did not exist yet as of Twisted Metal 1. So rear fire missiles are a specific type of weapon and only they can be rear-fired. Which means following enemies as they're trying to run away is uh, much safer than it is in other Twisted Metal games, because the AI has infinite uses of every weapon in the game. They will just switch to the best weapon and fire it directly at you if you try to chase them. They can't do that in this game. Here's Warthog, a large enough vehicle to run me over if I try to use my special on it. So even though it's the only thing left, and it's pretty damaged at this point, I do have to be very careful here. Road spikes are not going to do it. So, yeah, there's a lot more mechanics to this game than I ever realized. 
and uh, I'll try to work them into my commentary. Because there's not going to be too much else to talk about. This is a fairly bland entry in the series. Not many features. Fairly poor level design. Minimalist. At least I never really have to use turbo. I mostly use it for uh, acceleration purposes. Because acceleration can take a very long time in this game. But if you just tap the turbo button, which is assigned to the triangle instead of double tapping the accelerator, you will uh, get up to your full speed very, very quickly. And my full speed is perfectly fine as Thumper here. I'm used to playing as much slower, much higher armor vehicles. Because health values are terrible in this game. My damage vehicle has uh, only one headlight. It's a huge Jacob Dylan fan. But that is a decent attention to detail. Pretty clever presentation ideas throughout the game to make up for the lacking uh, attributes in the game itself. But there's the three easy levels down. Now for the first really, really hard level. And the first appearance of Hammerhead. I'm not even going to attempt to do this playthrough. Because I only had one life left, I need to refill my lives. Only way to do that is by using a password. Now notice, we select the vehicle, then we input the password, meaning each password works for every single vehicle in the game. You only have to uh, complete each level once, and then you can play through it with any vehicle you feel like. We were on the park. There we go. Ready to get back into it with full lives this time. That freeway level we just played through was remade for Twisted Metal Black. And so was this downtown level we are about to play. And those two levels stick out as being particularly bad in Twisted Metal Black. Which otherwise has phenomenal level design. There's a, a hemisphere for a homing missile above that tree. A Christmas tree. And I believe the only way you're supposed to get it is with the, uh, this one, the catapult weapon. Drop that, like, in front of the tree, a specific distance away, and then drive into it, and you'll be flung to the top of the tree. Doing that on purpose would be impossibly difficult. But I can't uh, imagine any other way to do it. And I just exploded, so uh, I don't have my catapult anymore. There's plenty of them lying around because it's a useless pickup, so they sprinkled them all over the place. Uh, I'm down a life already. You do not want to be the first person to die. Lives come at a very major premium. And Hammerhead's about. Hammerhead is effectively a mini-boss. It's got so much more health than all the other vehicles, it's ridiculous. And its AI routine is get in your face and stop you to death. Darkseid will try to do the same. But Hammerhead is much better at it. Stark side has miserable stats besides armor. Yeah, I don't stand a chance of making it through this one. These levels from here on out are really all or nothing. You get a foothold in them right away or you lose. So... Might take a bit of a while. There are very few levels in this game. 
So, they're mostly very difficult. This one is very obviously just an expansion on the second level, the warehouse district. They made it double the size and called it a new level. Nice work. So Spectre is around here. You do want to get rid of Spectre early because it's special, can go through walls. You're never actually safe from Spectre, but Hammerhead is protecting Spectre slash partially killing him while trying to kill me. There we go. Spectre's down. Go get a health refill. Stock back up. Refs. Refs are such a terrible idea in this game. They would be a decent idea in a Twisted Metal game that controlled well. Which obviously is not this game. Refs in this game just mean you're always in danger. Everywhere, you're constantly getting shot with machine guns and rocket launchers. There is no breathing room ever, anywhere. And you have very little control over this game. I'm in control of what I'm doing roughly 70% of the time. Uh, hell, it's probably like 60 at best. Oh, there's Hammerhead. Gotta leave. Let him accidentally crash into those other two guys. Slowly murder them. I'm going back across the river for more health refills. Yeah, the refs. Uh, some of them are... Uh, on their knees, firing rocket launchers. And uh, you can't shoot them with your machine gun. They're immune to machine guns because they're they're in a crouched position. So your machine gun bullets go over their head, theoretically. Visually, your bullets fly right into them. But the game don't care. So Yellow Jacket will try to spam his special. He will always try to face you and hit you with his special. He will also continuously drop mines. And mines in this game are a big deal. They do much more damage than they would do in any future game. Much more damage than they ought to do. Missed my turn. Hard to tell because the textures are so busy. You can't even really tell where the side alleys are. Oh, sweet tooth. You sicken me. I was so close to a health refill too. At least sweet tooth isn't absurdly overpowered. His stats are miserable in this game. His special is one of the best, but he has a hard time actually landing it. There is Yellow Jacket dropping mines constantly. Like there's a cooldown when you drop uh, anything. All of your attacks have a cooldown on them. And Yellow Jacket will drop mines at the maximum rate that the cooldown allows forever. Completely filling all the streets with mines which the AI is really, really good at avoiding. Here comes Napalm Cones. Right at me. Ruining my day. Uh-oh. Okay. If the enemy is facing away from you, you're all set. But they are... Rarely facing away from you. And you can see Sweet Tooth goes up on like two wheels and spins in place, which is impossible for the player to do. But the AI does it fairly often. I mean, I say it's impossible for the player to do, there might be a way. The controls, especially for the driving, are very, very over designed 
for how poorly this game controls. You'll notice when I take a turn, I slide. Uh, T-sliding is programmed into the game. So if you take a turn at like 90 degrees, you will slide. And that is a design choice. You're supposed to ram into enemies from the side like that. If you turn and hit the uh, the sharp turn button, which is X, you'll do a full 180. So, in order to, say, go around this corner here, I have to roll my hand, my finger, across the uh, accelerator onto the sharp turn button, and then onto the brake, so that I stop the slide. It's very weird to get used to. And, uh, Thumper is on ice physics, of course. Also, collisions with walls and anything else in this game deals damage to you. Even very, very minor collisions chip away your health. You do not have health to spare. Enemies are hiding from me. Crimson Fury, though. Crimson Fury is a non-entity. They may as well just not even put him in each level where he appears. And I mentioned at the beginning, the enemies we get are not randomized, except for on the arena duel. So we will always get the same group of enemies in each level. I already know in advance who's going to appear and I'm not happy about it. Can get rid of Yellow Jacket with all of our specials here. He's gonna return fire with Molotovs, but didn't matter in the end. I think only Sweet Tooth and Hammerhead are still alive. No, Roadkill and Hammerhead. Sweet Tooth's down. Roadkill is also a bit of a non-entity. His health is poor, and his special is, like, basically nothing. So you don't have to worry too much about roadkill. And Hammerhead's at half health, so this is doable. But he could instant kill me if he feels like it. He doesn't seem to feel like it, though. He's changing his mind. I'm out of specials. I need to go stock back up. On the bright side, Hammerhead doesn't usually fire weapons. No real missiles to speak of when he's around. He is, uh, much more focused on ramming you. So you can actually run away from him. Most other vehicles, if you try to run away, you'll just, uh, get exploded from behind. Hammerhead is not that sort of guy. So only one enemy left. The least threatening enemy, but my health is miserable. And my ammo pool is not so hot either. We'll stock up just a little bit. Ooh, homing missiles. That might do it. And he's coming for me. One more. Close call, but that is a win. I will take it. Then I will fully reset the moment I set foot in Siberia. Look at that. Look at all those enemies. No thank you. I'm going in with full lives, and I'm running away the instant the fight starts. Unless Spectre starts right on my tail. Once again. Ooh, also, Sweet Tooth, actually selectable on the main title screen for the last time until... Uh, Twisted Metal Black, actually. Sweet Tooth becomes a secret character in the next game, and stays that way for three and four. They don't want you playing as Sweet Tooth. He's the mascot, not you. Do not put yourself in David Jaffe's murder clown shoes. So, at least the password for Cyberbia is easy to remember. Because you will be entering it 
a lot. This level is way too hard, and look at the enemies we get. Darkseid, Hammerhead, and Sweet Tooth. And Warthog in there for another bullet sponge. This is like a thousand times as much HP as we have to work with with our three lives. I'm pretty sure Darkseid alone has as much HP as our three lives. But we can use recharge stations. Dark side cannot. So you do want to hit and run a lot, get your damage in, and get out of there. This is a very slow, arduous level. Seemingly by design, and your main strategy is going to be just waste a lot of time and use the recharge stations when you can. Also, divide and conquer. Individual enemies are not so threatening, but when they group up, they can really do a number on you. They can also destroy each other, though. So, strategic balancing is required. Risk assessment is constant. And uh, honestly, it is very well designed in that way. That whole prologue thing I read about life and death decisions being made constantly is actually true because this level is way too hard. So I guess that's what they were going for? I don't know, it's, it's kind of impressive for the first ever car combat game to have had that level of uh, intention behind it. It's really, really unpleasant to get used to, but there is a certain je ne sais quoi to this level that I can't really explain, but I kind of enjoy it. And I certainly appreciate it on an artistic level as much of a nightmare as it has been to play through this level so many times in my life. I have really gritted my teeth through this thing many, many times. Hammerhead right in front of me. We can use a strategy that I employ a lot in Twisted Metal Black. Charge at an enemy, hit him at the last second with a very powerful attack that sends them airborne and drive underneath them. For good, safe damage. Freeze missiles, because we can't use freeze, uh, Special attacks, or energy attacks, that's right. Because we don't have an energy bar. That said, freezes are not very useful, unless you're Darkseid. Darkseid's unique uh, AI quirk is that it will constantly fire freeze missiles. Non-stop, it will face you and just shoot freezes at you over and over and over again. And once you're frozen, Darkseid will then plant itself on top of you now, Darkseid also has terrible handling. It actually has worse handling than Thumper. So, it has even worse ice physics. To the point that it can literally spin in place. Which means Darkseid will plant itself on top of you, then spin around and around and around. And uh, each time, every degree it turns counts as a new collision which deals full ramming damage to you. It will grind you to death immediately before the freeze ends. So that's why it has that freezing AI quirk. Very, very cool design. And of course, the player cannot do that. The inputs are just not something an actual PlayStation controller can, in, can do. So... The AI cheats. I mean, it's a Twisted Metal game, of course, the AI cheats. We've only killed Spectre so far, but we've, we've done a lot of damage to the other enemies. And these guys are all stacked up, so they'll start to bludgeon one another. I believe Sweet Tooth and Yellow Jacket are accidentally fighting each other. Just a little bit. A little patricide going on there. 
because Yellow Jacket is Sweet Tooth's father. Although I can't make any jokes about Roadkill being Sweet Tooth as well, because that's not true yet. Spoilers for future Twist the Metal games. There is an overarching plot to this series, believe it or not. This level also has pickups that are floating above trees. Won't be getting any of those. Well, let's see, we've got mines scattered around. I hate these vans. Every single person in Siberia drives a van, not a minivan. A full white van, unmarked. Very suspicious. But they take so many shots to destroy. It's gonna get a lot worse from there. The next level has environmental destructibles that take your entire ammunition cache before they actually go down. I'm just dropping mines, hoping enemies run into them. I should probably lure Yellow Jacket into doing the same, since he will. But I have to chase him first. Love the soundtrack to this game. And also, impressively, it is uh, contextual. So right now, there's no enemies around. It switches to a more ambient version of the soundtrack. And then when I'm in combat, it switches to a more up-tempo style. It does so very awkwardly. It doesn't seamlessly shift between the two tracks the way uh, N64 games of the era would do. Because that technology was considered beyond the ability of the PlayStation console. Which is one of the major selling points of cartridge-based systems like the N64. They could have multiple uh, music tracks loaded in at the same time. Oh my god, I literally can't move. Oh wait. Nonetheless, very clever that this game implements multiple music tracks in a single level. Um, yeah, I didn't do really enough damage there to have a very good chance going forward. But we'll keep at it. I'll play more aggressively. And if it kills me, just as well. This whole run might be wasted. Already. There's Sweet Tooth down. The third biggest threat in this level. Hammerhead is by far the biggest threat. Nah. Gonna edit out a few sneezes there. <laughs> Gross. That is the reason for the enhanced timbre of my voice. I have a mild cold. Uh, where's the nearest enemy? Yellow Jacket's behind me. I'm gonna go for a health refill. Just to top it off. Constantly in danger from these refs. Hate them so much. It's very hard to tell just from the, the dots on the map who's coming at you. Because Roadkill has like this olive green dot. And Warthog has a light green dot. Pit Viper has a green dot. And I think there might be another car with a dark green dot. All these shades of green. Fortunately, only two of them appear in this level, but they're indistinguishable. There's a Hammerhead, there's the regular green. There we go. 
So three of them appear in this level. Ramming into Hammerhead dealt like a quarter of my health bar there. I was the aggressor, and I took more damage than he did. Hammerhead gets severely nerfed in later games. Out of necessity more than anything else. It is way too powerful. This section is terrible for combat, but it has pretty good pickups in here. The AI knows that it's at a major advantage when uh, doing combat in here because it can actually aim. So they will try to hide in here and lure you in. When they're desperate. So another point and fair for this game. Quite good AI design with specific scripting for each of the vehicles, which you can begin to uh, observe and uh, react to before they even do it. So expertise does pay off in this game. Could say the same for any game, but this is more observational than uh, strict uh, skill. Which is neat. That's a skill as well. Memorization and uh, awareness of your environment and your opponents. Sun Tzu would have a lot to say about it. Uh-oh, I'm on my special. I meant to be on power missiles. So Darkseid's doing uh, the freeze thing. I'm going to do the power missile thing in response. Homie Missile should. No! Homie Missile, why? Why would you do this to me? Okay. So, targeting is very strange in this game. That is definitely an AI or a um, programming error. Is that sometimes your target will be through a wall and the homing shots will go for them anyway. What we just saw there is definitely a programming error. These health refill platforms. It seems like the platform itself is like maybe a pixel or two higher than the ramp leading up to it. So you have to be dead on in the exact center of the ramp or you will not get on top of the platform. I can't imagine that was intentional. But when you're going for health refills, you're often desperate and panicked, and your vehicle just will not get on top of that platform to actually initiate the refill. It's horrifying. Heart pounding in a way they, once again, could not have possibly intended. Yellow Jackets dropping mines. We'll try and bait a few more out without running into them ourselves. They're very hard to see, especially on the road here. Because the road is properly marked for safety. Warthog not being aggressive. Now he is. I have no health refills. There are refs all over the place. Look at how damaged the enemies are, though. This is doable. We still have one life after this one. And a health refill has popped back up. They usually pop up in groups. Oh, no. Mr. Grimm, why? <sighs> that was incredibly unlikely, too. Mr. Grimm was still in his avoidance AI pattern. but he happened to be heading towards us while we were going for a health refill. Got an attack of opportunity in DD terms. 
There's the biggest enemy down, and Warthog is not long for this world. So the largest threats are about to be taken out. With the horribly balanced vehicles in this game. Taking out uh, Hammerhead and Darkseid is worth more than taking out, like, four other vehicles. I would definitely weight them at at least twice as deadly as most of the other cars in the game. Warthog's hiding in the LA River. I just learned that that, uh, the LA River is, uh, no longer extant. The reservoir thing from, uh, Terminator and Greece. They got rid of it. Because LA is in such severe drought conditions, it no longer serves any purpose whatsoever. And in such severe um, housing uh, predicaments that they need to uh, use up all available land space. So they are destroying landmarks like that to create. Uh, Places that are inaccessible to all human beings. Because they cost too damn much. LA is depicted as a nightmare in this game, and, uh... Yeah. It was in the 90s. It is today. Definitely a good place to set your satire. Also a very common place to set your satire. Bit overused. Anyway, like I was saying about these uh, refill stations, they seem to all recover and become usable again at the same time. Or rather, the ones that appear in portions of the map all recover at the same time. If you happen to be within vicinity of uh, several of them all at once, you can actually see them become active all at once on the minimap. Which suggests that that is uh, how they are programmed to work. So you actually benefit from using all of the refill stations that you can so that when the recovery period for them is up they will all uh, recover at once. Any that weren't used will be wasted at that point. There are like three discrete zones throughout this level. Yep, Mr. Grimm has become aggressive because he's the second to last guy. You do not want to be directly in front of him because he has an ultra, ultra powerful special. But no HP. Okay, he did not manage to land a special. And all that's left is roadkill. Let's see if we can't get homing missiles to guarantee his death very easily. Homing missiles appear somewhere near the middle of the map. But everything looks so similar. It's hard to tell where the middle is. Uh, that's mines. Mines aren't going to help us too much. There's homing missiles in the LA River here. But there's also roadkill. He's got no HP. Who cares? Let's murder him. And we got homing missiles. This guy is so dead. Captain Spears, he is in this game. You actually lose control when you're going up a ramp. Because it's like, uh... Like an epic scripted thing. Oh, he killed himself. Very nice. But when you're going up something that is, uh... Designated as a ramp in the programming you do actually lose the ability to turn left or right. So you can't do very fancy, precise ramping movements. Okay. So I figured out... Well, this is not going to work. What am I doing? I'm going to immediately drive off a building. Immediately, thank you. Collision actually saved me from killing myself for a second there. But into the green. 
There's a screen I've seen way too many times. And right back into it. The password for this level is... Square, triangle, kisses and hugs. Now, back to the rooftops. I don't know why they could just give you, like, a retry button. Maybe it was beyond their programming capacity? But I doubt it. Could just be a cruel design choice to force you into very slow loading screens. We're playing this on the PS3, which has uh, capped cycles for uh, PS1 emulation. So PS1 games run at uh, two times CD speed. I can't even imagine how high the uh, disc read speed of a uh, PS3 is. I know a PS2 has uh, 32 times CD read speed. And you can uncap it. I've finally uh, figured out how to do that on a PS2. So when I play games, uh, PS1 games, on disc in the future, I will do so with uh, uncapped cycle speed for dramatically higher, dramatically lower load times. Outlaw is very lucky to be alive. Let's fix that. Very nice. That's not where I wanted to kill him, though. This whole level, like every moment, is a strategy I've uh, devised. Outlaw just <laughs> ground his corpse through me. That was apparently a horrible place to kill him. Oh well. This is still doable. We have to be very careful. If we're going anywhere near the edge, the ice physics will push us right off. Take out that guy because he's crouching so he cannot be shot with bullets. And bring down this crate. This crate is very important. Mostly because it contains a power missile. Now the health recharge station. It's way back on the first roof. God, the music for this level is fantastic. Look at how far Outlaw's corpse slid. Ugh, oh, dark side. You sicken me. I'm gonna retry this already. So, we're gonna... I got a little distracted by Outlaw and my insistence on killing him last time. We won't do that this time. We will stay focused, go right for the precise routing that I have to do in order to actually complete this level. Which is... We go right for that secret rooftop. We knock down the crate. We get the power missiles. Enemy spawns seem to be allowing that for now. Crimson Fury is on the lower level, so won't be bothering us. Outlaw is right on my tail. I don't have the turbo to get between roofs, which is nice. Okay, the Crimson Box is coming down. Darkseid is camping the ramp that I need to go up. That could be very bad. Ooh, it's, it's definitely very bad. But he insisted on using his special for some reason. Crimson Fury also camping a ramp. That's a real cellar door of a phrase. Camping a ramp. But uh, we got to get this pyramid down. So when I did the LP, I played this level as Darkseid. I don't want to use my homing missiles. We were able to ram the pyramid down. That is because ramming damage is preposterous when you are one of the larger vehicles. Darkseid is the largest vehicle, so I was just able to crash into the uh, pyramid like three or four times down it came. Thumper cannot ram the pyramid down. It would take like half an hour. So we have to use our weapons. 
our special weapon, despite being ultra powerful, is nowhere near powerful enough. Uh oh, I'm spinning in place. Ugh, this run's kind of doomed. But yeah, if we shoot our special directly at the pyramid for a very long time, it still will not come down. I think it softens up the pyramid, but I've never been able to break the pyramid outright using just my special. Power missiles do a lot more structural damage to the pyramid than anything else I've found. Besides ramming damage, of course. But, uh... The only power missiles that are outside of the pyramid are in the secret crate. So, as any vehicle that isn't Dark Side or Hammerhead, you want to get that secret crate first. Which is what I will do when I get back in there. Opening up the uh, secret area there is, of course, essential, because that's where the recharge station is. And you will need that in an emergency throughout the final battle. So, repeat the process. And there we have catapults. There are a lot of uh, environmental weapons throughout this level, like the catapult and the oil slick. They clearly expect you to try and force people to drive themselves off the edge. That's not going to happen. Not with the AI, at least. If you're playing multiplayer, maybe. Actually aiming at anything is near impossible. We do have to be moving in order to turn our vehicle. Once we start moving, we lose control immediately because our handling stat is miserable. Okay, we did it. Now to do the next part of our tedious setup. Then we can start cheesing this fight. We will still probably lose a life because Dark Side and Outlaw both represent fairly large amounts of HP that we have to whittle down. We want to be a certain distance away because sometimes shots fired from point blank will go through their target and not actually do damage. But now we have access to very powerful weapons. More homing missiles, more power missiles even slightly more fire missiles. I'm fairly certain fire missiles and homing missiles do exactly the same amount of damage, but that amount is pretty high, and fire missiles are very plentiful. Their homing capability is bad, but it eventually becomes worth it. I'm gonna put oil slicks down underneath the exit to the secret area. Then I'm gonna wait for people to show up on my rooftop. I'm gonna kill this ref who's shooting me in the back. Um, oh god, I almost died. Oh, the ref jetpacked away. His home planet needs him. Crimson Fury can actually dodge our homing missiles sometimes, but not today. I believe sending enemies into an airborne spinning thing requires that you do a percentage of their overall HP in a single attack. Oh! Damn it all. Ice physics. But yeah, Crimson Fury, very, very easy to spin out. Our vehicle, Thumper, quite easy to spin out, even though we supposedly have four armor. Four out of five. What a lie. Okay, we'll burn Crimson Fury down. Ironically, you would think he would be fire resistant. Not necessarily where I wanted him to die, but that's fine. Killing enemies on this rooftop is actually part of my strategy. And Dark Side. We definitely want Dark Side dead here. Here specifically. And you'll notice power missiles do like twice as much damage as homing missiles. 
and even a direct shot straight into Darkseid does not cause it to spin out. Which is why I believe spinning out is a property that relies on dealing a percentage of a target's health pool. Get our health refill. Only the one in this level. Very sadistic. But I guess health doesn't really matter, because many of our deaths are going to be chalked up to driving right off the edge. When we were dark side, we were able to stick to the edge and climb back on. That's not going to happen as Thumper. Our hitbox is much smaller, so we have a less opportunity to get through, or rather to actually, you know, stop on that edge. Ugh, dark side's freezing me. And Outlaw double teamed me. This can still be pulled out, but it's very unlikely. So yeah, smaller hitbox, so the window of opportunity to grab onto the ledge is much, much smaller. And we're a lot faster. And we slide all over the damn place, so probably not going to be grabbing the edge too often. I have done it before as Thumper, but I don't rely on it. Okay. Just outlaw. Outlaw's aggressive, but it will not bother to face you, because it's special can hit from any direction. So it will sort of try and side strafe you, do other awkward things, like freeze you. Okay, minions showing up. So we're gonna have to run away for a while. Max out our stock. Fortunately, minion can be manipulated. But we need weapons to take advantage of that manipulation. We need not to drive off of an edge, which is possible even when I'm not being threatened. We need a lot of things to go right. If we take it very, very carefully, I give us about a 33% chance of victory here. I like those odds. There are fire missiles in a box behind me. For some reason, power missiles have not really regenerated this whole playthrough. I'm using my turbo to get out of there. Dropping some mines. I flew off the edge. Saw that coming. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know why weapons weren't respawning there. Maybe the enemies were collecting them? I don't think they collect pickups, though. Weird. Uh, nope. When you hit exit, you have to go through all the screens over again. Can be very frustrating when you're trying to menu in a hurry. Because you're getting real sick of this game shit. I'm not at that point yet. I'm still having fun. I've yet to show off a actually decent run of this level. I'm surprised I got Suburbia in effectively one go. And if I didn't, pretend I did. But yeah, Suber uh, Suburbia is very, very difficult. This level is actually probably even harder. <clears throat> but, uh... We'll get through it. Okay, we got a good setup. I'm actually gonna use my oil slicks here. They're not gonna help me at all. I'm pretty sure the AI just cheats and doesn't change its physics at all once you have an oil slick down. It certainly affects us when we get uh, go through an oil slick. 
we will actually lose 100% of our traction. I don't know if vehicles with uh, better handling can deal with it more easily. But we won't see that in this run, that's for sure. Okay. I used one of my power missiles because I saw Outlaw. But we were still able to take it down with fire missiles. Outlaw's coming back. He doesn't want us to use the recharge. Neither does the game itself. Sometimes the big pins on the side of the recharge station seem to block you. And other times you can just pass right through them. I don't know if they're intended to have collision or what. In all my experience with this game, and constantly using recharges because it's necessary for survival, I still do not know how they work, and I certainly don't know how they were intended to work. As it cannot possibly be how they actually do end up working in the game. I do wish the oil slicks were flammable, that would be cool. Okay, catapults and oil slicks. All over the damn place. Oil slicks right next to the edge, that's terrifying. Dark side doesn't need to do anything besides touch us and we'll lose most of our health. I didn't realize I didn't have a weapon selected there. Ah, oh, what? That was so much damage all at once. Oh, I hate this game. <laughs> Why would they put Dark Side on the final boss level? Bumper is a very, very powerful vehicle. Dark Side and Minion on the same level negates all of that power. Crimson Fury is not going down. I don't know why. That should have been enough damage to at least get it to a sliver of health, but it's still ticking. Outlaw's still hanging out on this roof. Look, or Outlaw. Dark side. Outlaw's dead. I didn't even realize that. So everyone's almost dead. Oh, Dark side ran away. Crimson Fury is coming back. Maybe. Hopefully I can get its corpse to land on this roof. Gotta ram Darkseid, unfortunately. It's costly, but I need that corpse right there. That is perfect. Back to the refill. It's tedious, but this is the only way through the game. I can't even fathom how difficult it must be to play through this whole game as Crimson Fury. Or Mr. Grimm, who are effectively identical in terms of stats. Surely someone has done it. Maybe I'll actually do a YouTube search someday to find out what Twisted Metal Expert has taken the ultimate challenge. Crimson Fury should be dead, but he got an extra couple of hits on me, unfortunately. Before a minion shows up. What do we have? Oil slicks? We'll use them. So this is why... I littered this area with corpses. This is one of the best places to fight Minion. And Minion's numerous attacks will be absorbed by the corpses. Which uh, really worked out in my favor, as you can see. All this exploitation and setup. And Minion is still way too powerful. We don't have any useful weapons right now. I kind of want to see where Minion's going before I head over there. You can't just turn around and come back, but 
which he might do. Okay. So we don't have a great setup here, but this will work. Minion has to come up this ramp, and he's doing so right now. When he does, I'll do this. And he's got Outlaw Special, of course. Oh no, what the hell happened? It didn't kill me somehow. And I made it off the roof. So now we run away from Minion, and wait for a special to refill, restock a little bit, do that pathetic cheating strat again. Sounds like Minion might have some unique sound effects that I've never really heard before. All the specials in this game have unique sound effects, but Minion has all the specials in this game. Approximately all of them. There's some that he either doesn't have or it doesn't matter whether or not he has them. Because he might never use them. Okay, we'll save the homing missiles. Because those are actually useful even if we don't do the exploit. Our special is only useful if we lure him up the ramp and then shoot him in the back. Power missiles, also good for the exploit. If we go through this cycle two or three more times, we should be good to go. And the refill is available again. So even when he definitely retaliates, we'll be able to recover a little bit. Gotta line this up just right, which is very hard with the controls of this game. Okay, he's retaliating. Just to be safe, we'll go for the refill right now. That did fairly pathetic damage. The minion has so much health. Even that tiny little bit shaved off represents two or three entire other vehicles worth of health. He's coming back our way, because he has no choice in the matter. What I like to do is fight him down here on this platform and then have the corpses strewn about so I can weave between them to uh, dodge his shots. But he's too damn dangerous. Cannot risk it with one health, one life remaining. Seemed like he caught up very quickly there, but no, he has to double back to go up the ramp. He's firing at me, but he can't get around the edge of the platform. Okay, he's stuck. Oh, he fell down. He fell through the wall or something? He worked it out. He's coming back. <laughs> we should be all set at this point. Absolutely pathetic boss fight, but you really can't do it uh, in any fair way. Not as most of the vehicles in this game. He is down. That rules. We have won the 10th Twisted Metal competition. Prepare to meet Calypso and receive your prize. Glorious. I'm going to wait for the text to scroll a little bit before I start reading it. Because it scrolls very slowly and I need a bit of a backlog. So, you are the winner of the competition and are granted an audience with Calypso, the creator of the Twisted Metal contest. As you speed into his underground garage, you spot him, surrounded by bodyguards and seated on a throne of broken car parts. His face is burnt beyond recognition. His smile is hideous. He speaks. As you know, I shall now grant you any prize you request. You know what I want, you tell him. I signed your contract. 
For the last 10 years, you have searched for a way to turn your South Central neighborhood into a place where people could feel safe. But nothing ever worked. Every night is still the same. Gang fights, drive-by shootings, robberies. Tonight, all this will change, if Calypso will grant your wish. He does. He promises to stop the fights, to stop the violence. You say you don't believe him. Calypso tells you to go home and see for yourself. As you speed off into the LA night, your heart is pounding with excitement. Could Calypso be telling the truth? Is your neighborhood safe? Was the battle tonight worth it? All the blood you spilled, in the end, will it be justified? You drive at top speed, racing home, only to find... Calypso was not lying. Calypso abolished the police, y'all. He ended the unjust and uneven enforcement of racist laws, which forces those in desperate situations to a life of crime, which then funnels them into the prison system, where they are subject to legal slavery, as per the exact wording of the 13th Amendment that was supposed to outlaw slavery, but in fact, did the opposite. And, uh... The lower class neighborhoods throughout America are now safe places to live where crime rates have been reduced to the point that the community itself can dole out justice as necessary per each infraction of their uh, safety within that community. Very impressive. Well done, Calypso. That is literally the only way to permanently reduce crime rates. Even literal magic could not, in the long term, reduce crime in the manner that uh, the ending we just watched uh, describes. Go look up any statistics wherein police actually have been uh, dramatically reduced or temporarily abolished, and you'll see that uh, the history actually plays it out. So thank you, Calypso, for providing what is actually the best ending of any Twisted Metal game ever. The Abolition of the Police. Nice work, Bruce Cochran and Calypso. You make a great team. And it was well worth that tedious boss fight with a uh, minion. Eh, decent game. Has its charm. Uh, the credits roll here can go over a number of different screens, which is kind of interesting. The outlaw ending, uh, Carl Roberts ends up lost in space, so the text scroll goes over a uh, space background with outlaw floating in the middle of it. And if you select the credits option from the main title screen, it will play over a cornfield for some reason. Maybe it's foreshadowing of Twisted Metal 2 where there's a cornfield level. I don't know. This entire game is very urban, so that's a weird choice. Ah, we made it through Twisted Metal 1. I mean, it is fun to play as Thumper. The way that the handling stat actually matters in this game is, from a design point, a good idea. From a gameplay point, awful. I hate it so much. I cannot control my vehicle. Ugh. But uh, even vehicles that have a good handling stat, I can't control them. This game is too slippery, and the way that T-sliding is actually programmed in, you have to do such a complicated button maneuvering to uh, do any sort of turn. It's a mess. They dramatically simplified the way controls work in the second game. The music in this game was produced by, among others, Lance Lenhart, who would be the composer for Twisted Metal 3 and I think 4? We'll see when I get to 4. But yeah, a fun game, worth a revisit, worth showing off how extremely powerful Thumper is. Mm, dubious fun. <laughs> you do have to play way too defensively. And the lack of a retry option 
means you got to go through a lot of loading screens anytime there is the mildest mistake or terrible RNG. So, we, we did what we needed to do. That's all I care about. If we had played through on hard difficulty, and made it all the way through Minion somehow, we would have then been sent to the uh, Fight of Your Life level, where you fight five enemies in the arena level from the first beginning of the game. Obviously, we did not play through on hard difficulty. We uh, would also have unlocked a cheat code if we play through on hard difficulty, which is a weird thing I didn't know about. The cheat code does not help you at all, so I'm going to type it in right now, because I have it written down. It is... The last spot is a space. You leave it blank. And it still works as a cheat code. So we'll see what that did, and we'll see what this does. Square, triangle, X, space, circle. A lot of the actual cheat codes have spaces, just so you wouldn't ever accidentally guess them. The odds of you accidentally guessing them in the first place would be uh, pretty low. Oh, I do want to send us to a specific level. We'll go to the rooftops again, because it's the best looking level in the whole damn game. So, heading right back in with Mr. Grimm, who I would have no chance of beating. They put Hammerhead against Mr. Grimm? I didn't even realize that. That's awful. Yeesh. I would take Dark Side over Hammerhead. So, yeah. One of the cheats I put in, the second cheat, was Invincibility. That is not the one you unlock for completing hard mode. Or unlock. The game just tells you what it is when you complete hard mode. What we did unlock was... We can go into first person view, that's, that's normal. But they did make a specific first person view for every character in this game, which rules. It's unplayable, but it's very cool. But if we switch views again, we get this view. An epic cinematic view called Helicopter View, which is not selectable by default. That was what the cheat was for that the game actually tells you about when you beat hard mode. And it's very well designed. The uh, 3D Grand Theft Auto games would have a very similar camera style but in those games, it was actually playable because you weren't trying to shoot things while driving around. Or if you were, it was directly to the side of your vehicles, which was so awkward to begin with. It didn't really matter what camera angle you had to play with. In this game, how are you supposed to hit anything? Just firing shots randomly. They're never going to land. I hit Hammerhead there, but uh, this is uh, not exactly reliable. I don't even know how this works on the indoor levels. It probably just clips through all the buildings. But yeah, this looks great. Uh, I'm impressed that they designed this into the game, but it is useless. Even more useless in first person view. So yeah, neat ideas in this game. Horrible execution on all of them. Still worth a revisit. Thank you for joining me. I will probably be replaying through other Twisted Metal games in their entirety while waiting for my friend to get his computer back in working condition. So, hopefully that happens soon enough. And in the meantime, see you for more Twisted Metal videos. Off we go.